Welcome if you are a new subscriber or welcome back if you are already subscribed. So today I'll be doing Rhythm Mystery. It has been such a long time since I did a sit down video and a sit down video that involves something that I truly care about and this video was supposed to be a series of videos that I did but time got in the way, life got in the way and you know I never got to film it but I initially had this planned along with the other three videos that I would have posted already. If you haven't seen that, check it out right here. But um, I wanted to bring awareness to how many women are dying in Guyana. And you know, since I am a woman, it really resonates with me and I saw the need to do it because I think it's something that needs to be done and I really am pro-woman and pro-loving on women and pro-anything that has to do with loving on women. So I decided last year that I wanted to do these murder cases, um, not pointing fingers but just highlighting what happened and in some way keeping the memories of these young ladies alive. I'm not sure if I'll be doing any more murder mystery videos because it does kind of take a lot out of me to do them because I have to study all of these gruesome things that happen and sometimes, you know, it has me wondering, you know, who could have done it, why did they do it and um, this murder case, well, um, it, I chose this one because the young lady is from the Esquibu area like I am from, she is a, she, well, she was a native of Cameroon, the Cameroon area. So I kind of wanted to include her in the series, well, her murder in the series that I was doing, and to, you know, in some kind of way, memorialize her life, um, because I'm sure she had plans for the future. And I remember what it was like being at her age, having so much that I wanted to do when I grew up. So I can only imagine how her family would be feeling. Um, I would like to say that um, this is very much an adult video so if you have your children around you I suggest that you allow them to step out of the room but if your household allows children to open stuff like this then it's up to you. Viewer discretion is advised. Um, also if you're not someone who can handle this kind of information please don't watch. I wouldn't want to harm anyone by you know triggering anything like this that happened in their family or in their lives so if you can't look at stuff like this or hear this kind of information please stop watching please stop listening once again viewer discretion is advised so let's get it Sasia Adams was just 19 years old when she met her demise she was an employee of Princess Romano Hotel East Bank de Marara. however she resided at that time in East Street story well her murder it's alleged that at the time of her death she was traveling in a vehicle and she may have left from that moving vehicle it was her 21 year old boyfriend at that time who was driving the vehicle and many believe or it's alleged that she may have left from that moving vehicle and that caused her to die however her family they believe that she was pushed from the vehicle and that is how she met her demise. Allegedly, this horrific incident took place on June 10, 2018. This was just four years ago and her death anniversary will be coming up in June of this year. So on, 20, on the 10th of June 2018 is when this horrific accident. Now, it was believed that Sasia and her boyfriend were traveling along Lamaha Street in a white 212 motor vehicle when the incident occurred and it is said that it happened at night. 
they said allegedly it was believed that while the vehicle was traversing along Lamaha Street, that Sasia jumped from the moving to 12 vehicle where she met her demise. It's also alleged that um, after Sasia may have flipped from the vehicle or jumped from the moving vehicle, that her boyfriend he stopped the car and he allegedly took her to a nearby hospital. Now, I have only read one newspaper article that said it was a balancing hospital. However, other articles were saying that it was a hospital that was close to Lamaha Street. So if you know Lamaha Street, there could only be two choices. You can go to inside a Balwensing or a GPSC. So I'm not sure if it is indeed Balwensing that I went to, but um, it was a hospital that was close by. According to the government pathologist, Sasia's death was caused by blunt trauma or blunt force to her head. Now, while Sasia was in hospital, she reportedly told doctors that she had fallen when she was at home. This is why her family to this day believes that she may have been pushed from the moving vehicle and not that she jumped from the vehicle because while she was in hospital, you know, she made these um, statements to the doctors that she had fallen at home and then her boyfriend had said that she had jumped from the car. Sassia's family described her boyfriend as an animal and at the end of me telling you the story, you will see a little bit of um, her mother's interview with one of the local reporters here, you will get a glimpse of what she had to say in her interview. Now, in a sad turn of events, Sasia died on June 12, 2018, just two days after she was admitted to hospital. She died and her story, I guess her side of the story died along with her. Now, the alleged murder accused um, requested bail and his lawyers actually got him to get bail. I think he was released on $500,000 bail and he was expected to be back in court on the 13th of July 28th. Now the boyfriend had to lodge his passport with court authorities and he had to make weekly visits to the Alberton police station. As part of his deal to be on bail, he had to report every Friday with the police to let them know that he was in the country and he didn't flee anywhere or he didn't have intentions of going anywhere and the, the um, court authorities also kept his passport so they had him under close watch. Now eight days after the 21 year old had been in custody he appeared before the Georgetown's magistrate court to be charged with manslaughter. Now the 21 year old murder accused he was not required to plea in any way to the charge and um, this is what his lawyer said in court so his lawyer stated this, that there is no evidence that his client deliberately or actively did anything so that was the case they were presenting or their side of the story that they were pre presenting according to reports from news articles that I have seen that is what his lawyer was saying on his behalf However, the story gets a little more um, surprising. Now, after the lawyer would have presented his case before the magistrate, surprisingly, the police prosecutor had no objection to the 21-year-old being given bail, and so he was released on bail. So, yeah, the, this was the police prosecutor. He had no, um, he didn't object to the young man being released on bail. So eventually, he was given bail. Now, um, after the guy was um, given bail and so on, and I believe this is after he would have, because eventually he would go on to not be put in prison. So after that court session, which you will see a little bit of, um, I think I have footage of that, a little bit of that, her sister, Satya's sister said that um, her family was disappointed in the ruling and they were also disappointed in the prosecutor and they felt as though the prosecutor had failed them in presenting his information to the magistrate and to the court and to the jury so they did not feel pleased at all with how the prosecutor presented his evidence. So she was actually saying instead of um, the prosecutor giving his all towards the case, he didn't do so. I was not there in the court, this is alleged um, articles that I read from the newspapers. So she didn't believe that 
the prosecutor put up a good defense on Sassia's behalf. She also claimed that, or she also said that the um, defendant's lawyer was presenting um, his evidence. At no time did the prosecutor that was representing the deceased, did he interject with any comebacks to, you know, say, okay, this is the information I have against the client, or this is the evidence that I have, say, otherwise he didn't make any objections or interjections. So she felt as though the prosecutor didn't do enough. And her sister said that she believed that the accused, the murder accused, he had paid off everyone and he had bribed everyone and that is why he had won his case and was in charge with her sister's murder. So she said that because he, or allegedly she said that because he paid off everyone, that was the reason why he could walk free and go and be with his family. Guys, what would you have done in this situation if your, your family or your sister or someone had died? How would you feel if you were in a courtroom and then all this evidence you have allegedly and then they let the person go? We weren't there, but what do you think happened? I don't know, like, these cases, they all always give you like such a, an empty feeling. Like, to, to think that this young woman would have had her whole life ahead of her and then just jump out of a moving car and just let it all go. I, I don't know how to explain that. Now, when, I guess, police investigators, allegedly, when they went to the home of the deceased, they found wet paint um, on her bedroom walls, and they also found blood stains on her um, curtains at her home, where she lived. I don't know if any of that was um, investigated, was tested, if they tested the paint to see if it had blood. I don't know if we have that capability, but according to one news article I saw, they said that what um, investigators found when they went to her home there was paint drying and there was blood on her curtains so, I don't know what do you guys think about that now with them finding this wet paint on her wall and also blood stains on her curtain this led her family to believe that um, some kind of fight ensued between the couple at her home and that you know this is where she was murdered and they also allegedly claimed that you know this guy had a temper and they believe that is what happened that he lost his temper and then he took it out on Sassio. In a post on social media this is what the deceased sister had to say. Today yet another day I'll never forget. March 11, 2019. The day and she called the guy's name. The murder accused walked free after the prosecutor failed to provide substantial evidence. She further went on to state in her social media post my sister is not at peace. She isn't here to speak for herself and the legal system failed to give her the justice she truly deserved. The thing is, Sassy chose, and she called the guy name, she chose to love him, she chose to be, she chose him to be her person and look where she is for just choosing to love someone. So there wasn't um, a lot of information on this case. It, it's like it was just an open and shut case. So I didn't find a lot of um, newspaper articles about it. So that's the most I gathered about her case. But I, I actually know someone that is related to the victim and that person took it really hard and I felt it for that person. Um, when I, I, I can't remember where I was exactly when um, this story happened but I know that it's rock Guyana and you could go in every bus and somebody would be talking about it um, everybody had their own opinions about what could have happened and why it happened but for me I just felt very sad you know because it was around that time that a lot of people were committing suicide or somebody was stabbing somebody or some family you know the father stabbed the mother and then kill himself stuff like that was happening 2018 and um, it had a little bit of that last year and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do these cases involving women because like I would have said I'm pro-woman anything to do with women or women in general I want to highlight so I do hope that you found today's um, video a little interesting and would want to go and research it I know that we can't do anything the young lady has gone home to rest and my heart 
truly goes out to everyone that has been hurt in this situation. I can't imagine how a mother would feel to lose her her child. You know? People in Guyana always say when a mother loses her child that her belly bottom starts to roll up. So I can only imagine. It's been four years now. I well researched and I came upon came across some pictures online. They actually went to celebrate her 20th birthday. They, they visited the grave site and they took a cake and you know they spread a table on a cloth and the family was there and so on. So um, even though it's something sad that happened, I'm glad that you know they could still find um, find comfort in having each other and being family. You know, family gets you through a lot of crazy stuff in the world. So I'm, I'm glad that her mother and all those who she loves so much they're surrounded by each other and that was today's murder mystery i'm not sure if i'll be doing any more murder mysteries um, and if i do i think i might do next i might do couple um couple, like murder suicide i might do that because i i kind of want to you know like read up on the old stuff and see if there's like a link to find out you know like why is it that men want to kill women and then kill themselves if there if there's like a pattern or so so if i do do any more murder mysteries it will be murder suicide like with husband and wife so yeah guys that was the end of today's video i do hope that you are enjoying my content on youtube thank you to everyone who has been subscribing Good things have been happening for the Guyanese Gem channel and I just want to say a big thank you if I could hug each and every one of you, I would. Um, so thanks guys, thanks for watching today's video and do keep safe out there and protect one another, love on each other and if you can't do any of those things just keep to yourself and keep out of trouble. So I did manage to find some footage of her funeral on Facebook and I'll share that with you guys. And I also, like I promised, I would do um, a little bit of the interview with her mother. So these are those two videos. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Jennifer Adams, the mother of Sasia Adams, is not buying the story that her daughter jumped out of her boyfriend's moving vehicle. The woman said she would never believe that story. The incident occurred on Sunday on Lemaha Street, but the young lady succumbed to her injuries two days later. Our boyfriend is in police custody assisting with the investigation. Never will I believe my baby would do such a thing. Never, never, never. I would never believe it. No way. What? It's the animal she was with. That is the Porsche and she never did jump out of a car. Somebody jump out of a car. You can come out of the situation your head your face clean no bruises just a couple of scratches here and here and your head back smashing no bruises on the lower body parts the post-mortem examination conducted this morning revealed that the woman died from blunt trauma to the head adam said by the grace of god her family is trying to cope with sassia's sudden demise i lost we all lost. He might be in wherever he is. He might come out. God Almighty going to deal with him. We put it in the Almighty hand. So when my mind flick upon my daughter, I cry. But when I'm overcome, when that part period of time overcome, I, I come out of that part. I get in a great relief. I feel glad. I don't know why. I don't know how what really taking place. She described Sassy as easy going. Sass, she was never a nice person. She was caring. She likes animal. But I don't know how come she mistaken a human for a skull. A skull. He. I don't know. I don't know. He's he an animal for maturity. It's not a uh, just just an odd day relationship with this person. He never, never, he, whenever he reach with relative of, of hers, he never show his face to them. He never go and he make Sasia break up with her boyfriend because of he got problem with him. Fight with Sasia boyfriend. I don't know what to say. Anyway, anyway, I, my daughter gone. 
God sees, He knows everything. I can cry now, tomorrow, days to come, years to come, as long as I live. Life up to God. Sassia was employed at the Princess Romada Hotel. This news has understands that the police are looking at CCTV footage from businesses in the area as they continued their probe into the incident. At no time do never cross our mind that we, that parents will have to put their children in the ground. There is no more powerful feeling than for a parent to bury her child. She was all beautiful young lady. From the moment she shot into this world, she was always willing to have a taste of all that life has to offer. She was very courageous to face her challenges, even under the end of her life. <laughs> On behalf of myself and the entire staff of the Princess, I would like to extend my condolences to the friends and the family. And I know it's not an easy task to say goodbye to someone. I was once in that same situation the same year. And um, I pray and hope that God sees and knows the situation and He takes full control of it. <laughs> 